Hello, biology students. We are in a brand new theme, theme two. So we're restarting our numbering of the topics. This is our first topic in theme one. I mean, theme two. Woo! See, even I'm confused. So second theme, new topic, topic number one, all about cells. This is our first page of notes for that. So make sure you also put today's date. Let's talk about all these old dudes. Okay. So, as we're talking about these old dudes, we're going to be listing and describing who they are, but we also want to talk about how they had a relationship with this thing called a cell and how we understand them today, which is called the cellular theory. Theory in science means something. It means that it's not just a guess, that it's backed with evidence. And so these the guys, they're the ones who collected the initial evidence, okay? So let's go through each of so the first dude we're going to be talking about, his name is Robert Hooke, okay? Who knows why he has that E at the end, but he pronounced it Hooke. He came up with the term the cell, right? How did he do that? He was looking at a microscope. This was such a simple microscope at the time. It really isn't the type we're used to looking at now. And the thing he was looking at was a piece of cork. Cork, in reality, is a part of a plant tissue. Specifically, it's kind of like the barky inner bark area kind of less hard than external bark. Oops. And as he was looking at it, he noticed that it had these kind of little containers inside that were kind of square-like, and he thought they looked like um, rooms. And back in the day, they were called rooms cells. Okay, so he called them cells. Then we have this guy, Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So you don't need to say his name or know how to spell his name, but know the guy a little bit. And what did he do? Well, he starts viewing living cells because those cork cells that Robert Hooke was looking at, they weren't really alive anymore. They were not part of the tree any longer. They weren't moving. And this guy, he's actually pretty gross. He ends up kind of scraping off some of his um, yucky teeth gunk, right? Yeah, that stuff that's kind of gets on your teeth if you don't brush your teeth. Gross, right? He was back in the day they didn't brush their teeth that much and he uses a much better microscope but not quite what we have today like it's not that great um and he observes cells a little bit more and he thinks they look like animalcules and he kind of termed that um but we don't use that so much today but he thought they were like weird little animals um, then um, uh, Matthias uh, Schleiden, that's how you say that one, <laughs> he discovered that plants, not only animals, were also made of cells. This was super bizarre because at the time humans were very thinking animals are the best thing ever. Um, and so he's like, wow, look at those plants. He uh, was looking at thin slides under a microscope. Still, our microscopes aren't that great back then. And he noticed that they also had these weird things called cells. Not exactly the same, but they were still cells. Then this guy, Theodore Schwann, um, he discovered that um, animals, right? He was not just like a couple of things. He decides all the animals have cells, right? So now we're really impressed. Not only can we be sure that some animals have it and some plants, we're now sure that both plants and animals are made up of cells, which is kind of a huge deal and makes us really start learning even more about the parts of the cell because now we're so curious why so many uh, different creatures are made of these things. And then this guy, Rudolf Virchow, he, he says, well, maybe it's not just that things are made of cells. Maybe cells are the basic unit of everything. Maybe they are, like, maybe cells don't come out of existence from nothing. They must come from other cells through cell reproduction. And he called it, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. This guy, right? And that's really about cells dividing, cell reproduction which is how we grow, which is how single-celled creatures make babies. It's amazing that this guy was able to come up with this on his own, okay? So those are our five guys, and based on all their findings and all the evidence they collected, and people even after them have collected similar evidence and even better evidence because we have better tools, um, it was all due to the microscope for the most part. We, we are really impressed that um, things have not ever regress back. We, we really have this theory that feels really well backed. And here's what that theory says. And there's three parts. The first part of the cell theory says, number one, all living things are made up of one or more cells. The cell is the basic structure of life. All right. What do we mean by that? 
If it's a bacteria, it's made up of one cell, but a baboon, which is bigger and many cells, it is also made up of cells. We call bacteria a type of cell that's called a prokaryote. We'll learn more about that. We call baboons, they are multicellular and more complex. We call them eukaryotes. We'll learn about what prokaryote and eukaryote are later. Um, but the big deal is that it didn't matter what it was. All living things were made up of these basic building blocks called cells. It was amazing. And because it's our basic unit of structure, um, we might be able to relate this back to hog racer. What letter of hog racer does that make you think of, right? Well, I think it talks about cells the most, so I'm leaning towards C, but I bet you could argue one of the other ones too. But it's about all living things, right? All living things are made up of C, cells, okay? Number two, the cell is the basic unit of function for multi and single celled creatures. Okay, what do we mean by that? All right, well, because cells in a multicellular organism, for instance, like us, we have different types. And because there's different types, we can make different tissues. So, for instance, there's a type of muscle cell, right, that is really good at pumping really fast. And that's our going to make up our cardiac muscle, our heart muscle. And they'll group together to make tissues. And those will group together to make organs like the heart. Other types of cells will group together by what they're good at. And they'll make skeletal muscles, which are good at moving around. Versus smooth muscles move, but not quite as much. And they make up a lot of our digestive tract muscles, which are important that they're squeezing. That's how you can feel your stomach growl and stuff like that. And it helps kind of mash stuff up in your stomach. But they're not quite moving the same amount as you would move your arm. So the big picture of this one is it, it doesn't matter what the job is in your body. The job is done by and organized by cells of different types, right? And this organize sounds like what letter of hog racer? What do you think? Oh, organize, which was all about structure and function, which was what that guy was all about. Different structures, whether you're single cell or multicellular, they're organized, and they're organized by types of cells. Last but not least, remember how Virchow said all cells come from pre-existing cells? Well, here's an easy way of saying that. Cells come from other cells because of cell reproduction. After you cut your knee, your body divides your own cells to replace those dead ones. Thank goodness, otherwise you bleed out. So we're lucky. And, and, and for a bacteria, that's how they make their babies, right? So what letter of hog racer does this one sound like? Kind of gives it away a little bit in the title. I think probably reproduce, but some people are really good at arguing growth too because it helps us grow, like grow skin back. So I think either of those two makes sense. And that's it. We have to know these three parts of the cell theory. It's the basics of what we're going to be learning in the cells unit. Soon we're going to be learning about different types of cells and different things that are in those cells. So make sure you know these basics really, really well. Good job, guys.